Okay, so let's start. Uh, the topic I choose is about uh, a sync pipe in Angular, but also I will talk to you about what exactly is a pipe in Angular. Uh, we talk more about what exactly is custom pipe. Uh, how to use uh, a sync pipe also some case in some cases. Also, we're talking about difference between pure and impure pipes. I will show you also a demo. Uh, also, I will uh, talk. Uh, we will talking about uh, a, a sync pipe and change detection. Uh, how it works in async pipes. Uh, I will show you some tips and tricks. Uh, uh, one of the example is with share pray. Uh, from RxJS library, and uh, at the end we talk about when we can't use async pipes. Uh, so let's start about pipe. So let's start with definition. So Angular pipe exactly is the class uh, which is responsible for data transformation. Uh, so mostly you are using the pipe in the template uh, using a pipe sign like this one and in front of the pipe name. Uh, Angular also has some built-in pipes uh, like uh, date pipe, uppercase pipe, lowercase, title, currency, decimal, percent, JSON, splice, and also the async pipe as uh, here. So it's a built-in pipe. Uh, so each of this pipe uh, have do some uh, specific things like uh, for date pipe it formats a date, uppercase pipe transforms some text, lowercase do the same thing uh, like to upper and lowercase and so uh, we can just read this information on Angular uh, website official documentation so basically it's a very very simple explanation what really this pipe can do. Uh, okay let's move on about what exactly is custom pipes and uh, how to create a custom pipes so let's uh, talk about this uh, firstly you if you uh, you need to create uh, firstly you need to create some class and this class ne class needs to, to implement uh, implement a pipe transform interface and uh, you need to have the transform method uh, which returns some transformed value. Uh, also, you have to decorate this class actually with pipe annotation and give the name of the pipe like here. And this name is using in the component template uh, where you apply pipe for some data. Okay, let's move on. So. Uh, let's talk about parameters for transform method. So first parameters in transform method get the value, which is in a template states before the pipe operator. Uh, basically this value you can see here. So about this one. So, so this states before the pipe operator. So this is a pipe operator. This is the name of our pipe and this is the uh, like exactly the sync in in value we can do some I think here. Okay, how to provide additional parameters for custom pipe? Uh, you can do something like this one. Uh, you can write it after the pipe name and actually split the parameters by columns and inside the transform method, uh, these parameters goes uh, first, second, and etc. So here we can see that uh, something like this. Uh, you have, uh, firstly, you have the value of our value and the next parameters just uh, uh, what exactly we want to do. Actually, we can do something like uh, if, if we have the value of string uh, here, we can, we want to just split uh, one from one uh, letter to five letter and just uh, in, in this value will be one letter and this five. So exactly, you can do some manipulation uh, with your custom pipes. Okay, let's talk about what exactly is async pipe. Async pipe actually is a built-in Angular pipe, uh, which allows you to subscribe and unsubscribe from your observables. 
So basically, you don't need to use a subscription in our in your component, and it is really the better solution. Uh, so uh, so you just uh, uh, you, you need to use async pipe to don't use subscription in your component. Uh, so actually, the other definition uh, in uh, is Angular async pipe. So uh, it's exactly uh, the pipe that subscribe to an observable or uh, promise for, and returns the last value that was emitted. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, as I say, a sync pipe doesn't work only with observable. It handles observables and also promises. Uh, so besides this, actually, a sync pipe also works with anything uh, what implements a subscribable interface. So you can write the, your custom subscriber method, and uh, and actually, a sync pipe will be work if this method will be implement subscribable interface and also have subscribe method and unsubscribe method inside. Uh, I think I can show you some uh, demo for this uh, because it's really very interesting. Okay, so... So here I create the custom subscribe and this custom subscribe, like implement a subscribable interface, also have subscribe method and unsubscribe method inside. And also in template, we can use like uh, this one, like async. So here you can see that it works and basically uh, you also have can use observable promises or your custom subscriber which uh, implements the subscribable. But anyway, you will be not using the custom subscribable in your project, but actually it's interesting information how actually it works and how you can manipulate with this data. Okay, uh, let's talk more about some uh, some pure and impure pipes, what exactly it is. So uh, we can talk about the difference between pure and impure pipes. So I will show also you a demo for this. So, so, so actually pure pipe execute uh, the transform method like here, uh, pure pipe uh, execute the transform method only when the reference to the input value has been changed. Uh, so I can explain like this. Uh, so here we have the component and uh, input value for you, for our pipe actually is array. And uh, you, you just want to push a new value and the transform method will uh, not be execute. You can just check here like I can clear my console and trying to uh, push the mat this button add new test and it will be not working. Uh, why? It will be not working because here we have the pure pipe and exactly this is a problem because a pure pipe uh, doesn't uh, work when we have uh, one single array. So to be work like this, we need to create another array so another array and using this spread operator and push some changes like this one and after that if we calling this test it will be work so how it uh, like pure pipe it works and uh, let's imagine that we have an pure pipe and let's come back to the previous changes uh, so Pure pipe, uh, we can. Oh, sorry, I need to change my language. Uh, so we can just do something like this one. Uh, we can pipe is uh, impure. Uh, so we can just reload this page. Okay, just be waiting. Oh, 
yeah here we are so today uh, if our pipe is impure uh, so we can test that uh, it will be working like this one so our pipe will be called uh, any change detection uh, call so basically the uh, imp impure pipe uh, it's not recommended to use uh, so if you like to uh, think about performance in your application actually it's better to use uh, uh, only pure pipe so like this one here and do not do execution and here if we do the same thing like create the another array so after that you will be see this result and it will be works very clearly because as you can see uh, every change detection call uh, of our impure pipes pipe is calling like two times or something like this and here uh, how the uh, pure pipe uh, it will be course only once like i click the button and one thing is called so it's better for our performance okay let's come back to our presentation Uh, we're talking about uh, also uh, about a sync pipe and how a sync pipe uh, works uh, with uh, change detection. Uh, basically, a lot of developers uh, with, which working with Angular think that a sync pipe uh, trigger change detection. But the answer is it's not trigger change detection and it's very important because uh, it's really uh, helpful information to uh, understand how it exactly works. Uh, so basically, a sync pipe uh, only does mark for check method. So the value uh, will be updated during the next change detection cycle. Uh, so it doesn't trigger change detection itself. Uh, change detection can be triggered by some async action like set timeout, uh, HTTP request, uh, and so on, uh, which might be involved at the execution of some stream, uh, but it doesn't trigger change detection. And you can check it uh, actually in the source code of Angular. So you can open like this link actually at the end of uh, this uh, meeting also i will share this link if you uh, be easy to find uh, but anyway you can google it uh, so here you can see on the official source code of angular you can open this uh, async pipe yes and here if you can find something for change detection here you can see that uh, on source code we have uh, the mark for check method and we don't uh, using uh, like uh, not triggering the change detection so it's really one important proof about async pipe how it works with change detection okay uh, let's move on about some example I will show you some example about some demos of working. Okay, let's start about the first the first demo. Uh, so here, as you can see, we have the one observable and one promise, like the example, and uh, like some one string of observable, and basically how it works here on ng on init hook you can write uh, our observable so uh, in our template you will see oh i'm so sorry template is here uh, here is so here you can see that uh, this observable you can press the async pipe and after that when this uh, will be finished so you can see this uh, on your uh, UI screen. 
this is the same about how promise works. So we need to not use an form variable. We are using the RxJS of operator. And for promise, you can use promise resolve, and you can see like the same thing. Okay, let's uh, comment out this thing and. Um, Trying to trying to understand explain how it works actually in this case. So uh, here we are. So here we have. Uh, here we have our users. So like this one and. Uh, we have some specific time where we can we need to resolve our promise so it's like for example so maybe about uh, instead of the set time out you can use some http request to our servers and something like this uh, so here we have uh, like this one very interesting trick because here we have the uh, variable for our promise so it's this one and exactly if we using the promise like this one in our template it will be not working so basically uh, we have the interesting trick that uh, here as in this one we can like uh, put us and push put like a name and basically this name actually will be uh, the uh, result value of this promise uh, so here you can use this result value here in your template like this one and so basically you can manipulate with this value because this value actually is the result value and basically you can do uh, anything about this value so if you want just to uh, maybe do something like here or we want to maybe adding uh, some another pipe for this lower case or something like this yeah so you can just see that this pipe working so you can do some pipe chaining so the result of the previous pipe will be the input value from uh, the the next so basically it works in like this uh, if we have uh, it works with ng if method but uh, with ng for method we also can do something uh, like this we can create the variable and this variable basically also uh, can be the result value of this uh, observable uh, so uh, this value also you can use in your template this is the result value so basically you can do any of you want uh, in, in your code so you can also do some uh, like you can like um, uppercase like do so you can see that uh, it's working because it's the result value and uh, something like this okay uh, let's move on to the next tip uh, how it works with http requests okay let's uh, move on so exactly how it works without async pipe uh, without async pipe it works uh, something like this that you have uh, some we need to have some subscription implemented from rxjs method you need to have uh, some uh, something like this so you need to have uh, the activity like to subscribe to something also you need to have the ng on destroy hook because uh, to it's better for the performance to do unsubscribe uh, and in your template you can do something like uh, without async so actually if we do without async pipe uh, you are only using like this one activities so here 
So here it will be working, um, but basically we have uh, one problem that uh, we need to use the subscribe and it's not uh, the better solution. Uh, so the better solution is not to using subscribe anymore because Angular do it manually. So we can uh, delete this code for subscribe and we can do something like this. We can create the variable. This variable uh, needs to create, uh, uh, especially with dollar sign. Basically, it doesn't matter if we do at the end or at the start. It's actually uh, how it uh, everyone look like, which uh, likes more. So basically, you can just choose uh, where you can use the dollar sign. Okay, uh, so here we can see that if we have here, uh, so we can just create activity, activity called async and put is as activities, yeah. Okay, here. Okay. So, okay, some error here. Uh, actually, actually, you have to declare your variable since you forgot. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, because <laughs> I forgot about this dollar sign. Yeah, and the activities as well. It's not the point. Yeah, so it works like fine, like this one. Uh, so here, as you can see, we can uh, do, if we can do get some data from the our server, you can see that uh, it will be working uh, like this one. So, and you don't need to use uh, the subscription and unsubscribe because Angular do it manually. Okay, uh, let's uh, move on to another demo. And another demo is about how exactly, you can just see that here. Some tricky logic here because random number goes eight and so here we are. So uh, this is the example. I create the custom observable, uh, which you can show uh, how Angular actually unsubscribe from uh, uh, the observable. So basically, you can see that. Uh, when we are using the async pipe, it's really unsubscribe from uh, this observable and actually our cycle is stops. So actually it's a good uh, solution to use async pipe in your project. Okay, uh, let's move on to share a replay example. And this share reply example, actually, uh, you can find uh, on the RxJS library. And on RxJS library, you can see that uh, how this share replied, what exactly it is. 
uh, share replay is exactly the method to which the share source and replay specified number of emission on subscription. You can look at this more uh, if you want to. And uh, basically uh, the main thing of this share replay, uh, when you have uh, actually one stream, so you can share this stream and if you create another stream like uh, maybe uh, you can just create something like this uh, first stream too and maybe using uh, also you need to use the same information from the first stream yeah and basically if uh, uh, you need to have uh, if you have in your uh, app component something like this, that you have a lot of your observables and a lot of uh, things in your template. Uh, so it uh, will be work good if you will be using this share replay uh, method. Uh, it's better for your performance. So like the example, uh, I, I, I actually don't have such the example how it works with HTTP request, but I can explain. Uh, so when you have in your network, you have like uh, three requests uh, uh, to the same uh, service uh, and you need to get at least uh, some users. In the next observable, you need to get uh, the burst of this user and in the, the third observable you need to get some uh, maybe uh, s some information of to do of the users so actually you you have three observables in your component and this three observables actually if you need to do three uh, http requests to our to your uh, server and when you are using the in your server server the share replay method, uh, it will be called only once. So basically, in your network tab, you will be show that uh, only you will be not show some duplicate of your requests. So you will be show uh, show uh, only uh, one actually uh, requests and it's a good actually solution because if you have uh, some couple of observables and actually this observables is really uh, a lot of things that you don't don't need to run at least five or six or seven observables and unsubscribe from them so you can only using share play and after that, it will be working without the problems. Uh, so you will be using only one observable and one the main observable, and uh, you can manipulate in something like this. Uh, so here we, you, you are using the one observable and also you can use uh, something like this scenario. So uh, you will be using one observable and uh, uh, the syntaxes of this you actually will be the same so you can using like first stream dollar sign second stream you can use the third stream and something like this so any of the data you want to resolve here in template uh, but uh, the great tip is to use the share replay method for uh, your performance uh, also i can uh, as wanted to say you about some interesting thing about pipes. Uh, I was notified this. And basically is the library called NGX pipe. And uh, this is a great library if you want to uh, not to write your custom pipes, but you can show here and look uh, which pipes actually we already have and something like this. And uh, this NGX pipe is really uh, very interesting because uh, 
here you can also see how it on npm trends are working so it's updated and uh, six years ago created so uh, if you want uh, to write your custom pipe firstly i recommend you to check this uh, library so okay uh, let's move back to our present and uh, we're talking about uh, when we can't use async pipe because actually it's also possible uh, but uh, uh, the first thing uh, when we can't use async pipe uh, so if you have to resolve some stream uh, within a service uh, where the service don't have a template and you need to subscribe to observable in the component. Uh, this is exactly the one thing that I found uh, when we can't use the async pipe. Uh, when you should uh, use async pipe, uh, I recommend you to use async pipe everywhere if it's possible. Uh, so uh, you uh, you should using it actually because uh, if you subscribe to an observable or promise uh, so you will need to unsubscribe at the end of your component life cycle and to avoid memory leaks and uh, you should use async pipe because of uh, change detection works uh, splendidly with async pipe and we don't have to unsubscribe manually because the async pipe handles this for us. Okay, so basically it's that's all which I want to share with you. Maybe you have some questions. Sorry, actually, I have one question. Uh, tell me, please, if I understand it uh, well. Uh, I mean, uh, a sync pipe will unsubscribe from the stream uh, after the first emit of data in the stream, or when? Uh, yeah, it will unsubscribe uh, after the data is emitted. And after that, not not exactly like this. Uh, actually, async pipe unsubscribe when the component will be broken or something like this. Like uh, ng on destroy, we have after a uh, destroy of the component. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. you leave the component, then it will be destroyed, and yeah. the async pipe will unsubscribe. Okay. Thanks. Okay, maybe you have some another question. Uh, 